out again, picking up where we left off on the Hadrian's Wall. So this is part three of the walk, and we're still on the military road, um, just up from the Robin Hood Inn, and this is what it looks like. So there's the style there to mark the way of the path. So my good lady's just dropped us off, filled my bag full of goodies. So we're off to do, I don't know, maybe 12, 13 miles again. We'll see. And head up towards sort of uh, towards Housesteads. We won't get to Housesteads today, I don't think. But uh, head up that way to the sort of the true part of the wall, if you like, where most of the tourists are. So we'll probably start encountering people as we go along. And um, we're going to head. From here, we're going to head along the military road down through a place called Chollerford. Um, I think we'll go through a place called Wall and past Chester's and up towards a place called Mild Castle 33. So that's the route we're taking today. Um, it's about 12 degrees, so it's quite warm. But it is forecast to have showers. But yeah, we'll just uh, go for it and enjoy it and see what we can see, as always. Take some video. And take some uh, photos so why don't you join me and then you can see what, what happens right, just from across the roundabout there's the Everett and Arms public house so just come off the road there following the track see the sheep Meh. and then uh, yeah it's basically a straight path for now um, a little incline, nothing to worry about, but just slowly going a bit higher and higher, getting a bit of elevation. Um, I think we do get quite high and we'll come across the trick point and uh, hopefully we might get a few views. And uh, yeah, about three quarters of a mile in. Lovely day. So just enjoying it, getting the fresh air. Oh, so this walk, I think, if you bring a dog, you probably have to keep him on a lead. Well, that's all right. But uh, just be mindful. You know, a lot of the a lot of the walk now will probably be across fields where the sheep are next to busy main roads. If you've got a dog, yeah, we'll continue on and. Uh, Long may the rain come right. Just checking back in. Uh, we're about a mile and a half in now. Up on the top, I don't know if you can see that trick point. Just on the other side of the wall there on the road. And uh, new conifer plantation here. Looks like a load of little Christmas trees being planted. So, uh, haven't really got the views though yet. And it's just starting to a little fine shower, a little bit of drizzle. It's warm though. So it uh, just cools you down a little bit, nothing to worry about. No need for the waterproof just yet. So we're just going to continue on. Um, we're heading to a place called Heavenfield. And uh, as you can see, I've got my book of my lovely lady. And uh, just me having a little read of that. So there's a church at Heavenfield, so we're going to go and visit that. I think it's about two and a half miles there. And uh, see what that's all about. And uh, yeah, just continue on the walk. There's a few mile castles, well, which are roughly every mile. But uh, I'm looking out for them, because there's not much left in most of them. But you do now and again see the odd ruin. Let's so see if I can find one of them. And then I know if I'm driving along the military road, we'll come across remnants of the Hadrian's Wall again shortly. So again, we'll get a little bit of video about that as well. And uh, yeah, but so far so good. Haven't uh, haven't seen any of our walkers yet. It is early. It's only about half nine, quarter ten, something like that. But uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll. 
come across some as we're journey on. Yeah. I'll just keep going for now. There we go, it's a mile and a half to Heaven Field. So, we're just continuing on. See the path, as you can see, the path's well signposted. And to be honest, you can sort of make out the path with the shorter grass. So, very easy to follow. And plus, the fact you just stay right next to the road. So no problems with getting lost at the minute. I wonder if that's part of the the old wall. That might just be a stone in the ground. It's hard to tell sometimes. Uh, quite a few little spots. If you had a tent, you want it to be out of the way. So that shower's passed anyway. And it's uh, warm again. A few midges. Nothing to worry about. And uh, we're just slowly, slowly gaining an elevation. So, nice pleasant walk and then nothing too strenuous. Right, just crossed the road for the first time today. Things signposted. And uh, pretty nice easy walk. We just basically over styles and across grazing meadows nice and soft on the feet now just one thing to watch when you do cross these roads up here the military road it is a national speed limit road um, which basically in England means you can do 60 mile an hour maximum speed which is about 90 kilometers an hour and uh, Cars and trucks do seem to come along quite quick. So just take care when crossing, or when walking on the side of the road. Uh, it can be quite intimidating sometimes when a lorry flies past, especially if you've got dogs. So just take that in mind. Most of, you know, most of the walk isn't on the road, but when you cross it, just take that extra bit of care. Continue on. See them a bit there. I don't know if you can see that. The clouds, because you get some great views. Both of you look here later on. And there. Uh, bit of sea. Bonnie Scotland, no doubt. Up the north. In the Tyne Valley and that in the south. There we go, bit of a view. So that's looking north. Now we're looking east. That's where we've come from, up that road look. There's the conifer plantation we walk through on the horizon. And yeah, and that way is Bonnie, Scotland. And that's the way we're going, west. Go west, life is peaceful there song there somewhere. Anyhow, let's keep going and we'll see if we can uh, maybe find somewhere to stop for a little break shortly. Now you ask yourself, is that a water reservoir or is it a nuclear bunker? I'll leave that one up to you. Put in the comments below what you think it is. Because used to have them like um, command posts, didn't they, where 
they would monitor nuclear blasts in the Cold War. And as you can see, it's a canny view of miles, so it makes sense to have one there. Or is it a nuclear bunker that's been transformed into a water reservoir? Anyway, you put in the comments which one you think it is. We'll see. I've got my theory. Looks like sunshine over at the west there. Getting the case in a little light shower, I've nothing to worry about. It's forecast to rain all day, so so far so good. We can never fight. Now we can see here, look, where the wall used to run along. And you've also got the ditch. I think there was an illustration back on heading in the wall where on the north side of the wall you also had the ditch and then the sort of wooden spikes. So not only did they have to get through the spikes that they go into the ditch and then up to try and fight to get over the wall. So it was a, a good border defence. When you think about it, you know, it must have took some doing because all them Romans had to walk from Rome, if you like, from Italy or, you know, they probably used local people as well. But, you know, most of the army would have probably originated from there or Europe anyway. You know, leaving the sunny Mediterranean or eating fresh fruit and that all day, basking in the sun and being told you're getting moved to a place called Northumbria, <laughs> where it's not so warm, not so sunny, and the food's not so fruity. And you're going to come, not only have you got to walk all the way here, when you get here, you've got to dig a trench, excavate stones, carry the stones, build a wall, and then patrol the wall. So, I don't know if it was seen as a bit of a punishment or... You know, whether it was a, a way of, you know, the people who got sent here were classed as very strong, able-bodied people. It was the best people were sent here to guard the frontier. I don't know. I might tell on Google somewhere. But yeah, getting some of the views now. I don't know how well you can make them out because it is a bit cloudy day to day. I don't know how well the camera will pick that up. You know, still haven't met anyone. So, you know, I would imagine in the summer be a bit busier. But it's, it is funny because you think all these people walking the wall, they're still going to walk this bit of the wall. You know, if they're going from west to east to east to west. So, the middle part at like Cowsteads, I think more gaps are always busy. But I think that's more in the just people out for the day. Walking that particular stretch, you know, visiting Sycamore Gap and the likes. So, yeah, we're just heading down to a place called St. Osmond's Farm, and uh, there's a, normally a little tea shop there. It's probably closed due to COVID, like. And uh, yeah, we'll pass there, and then we'll come across a little church that I've often passed in the car. So, we'll have a little wander around there, see what that's all about. And then see where we go from there. Trollerford, I think. Right, we're just coming to a place called Heavenfield now. You can see Heavenfield Church through them trees. Just slightly come off the path. The path was just where that gate is over there by the car. And uh, just come follow up here. So, a bit of information is there was a 7th century battle here which was led by the King Oswald of Northumbria against Cadwallon and the Penda of Mercia. So, we had a big battle here on this field all them years ago. Before the Romans were about. 
and their history says it was a victory for Christianity over paganism. There you are. And the victorious King Oswald was to become St. Oswald. And this church commemorates the battle. It was built in 1737. There you are. How's about that then, guys and girls? A lovely little church. Some lovely views over here as well, look. Must be breakfast time for the sheep, they're all barren. Anyway, God's own country. Lovely. See if it had been a bit uh, brighter, probably would have seen the cheviots. Not to worry. That's just about the church. Yard. So we'll go and have a look in there, eh? Now that there is a little set of steps for when people would come on the horse and they would pull the horse up beside there and then step down onto the ground. So we're just in the actual churchyard now. Someone there was James Herdman, 1851 How lovely this is. Lots of information, look. Out St. Oswald. There you go, if you want to read that, you can pause the video. Wow. Came here. What a beautiful church. Well, it's uh, a lovely place to get married or christened. Oh. Wait. Close these doors, leave it the way we found it. And a little look around here. Oh, there you go, look. Yeah. 
Same inside, been there a few times. Cheviot, Hedgehog, been up there. Oh, Keelera, been there. Oh. Yeah. Right, we'll head back down to the, the path. Well, if you're walking on here, pop up and have a look at the church. It's worth it. It's not far off the path. And yeah. Right guys, there's a bit more about the battle, so if you want, just pause it. That might be a walk for another day, St. Oswald's Way. Hmm. Let's have a good look at that. Right, now this is interesting because when they got the wall, started building it here, they actually changed the, the design of the wall look. Maybe to um, get the wall built quicker and more economical. Ah. There you go. And there's a bit of the wall there, look. And what they also did, was if you can look along here, there's actually a culvert. They started installing these for the, almost like sort of field drain. And you know, look, so all the water that was gathering in the ground on either side of the wall would have somewhere to run through so it wouldn't uh, distort destroying the foundations of the wall so there you go eh? Roman drainage right on to the next fascinating part We're just heading towards Chalaford now, about a mile and a half. And I think we'll turn left and head um, past Chester's. Where's our Brunton? I think there's a turrent, the turrent, the Mile Castle turrent is uh, called Brunton Turret. That must be around here somewhere. Very close, no doubt. I'm sure we'll find it. Probably just from one of these corners. Right. We've just come down that track. And there's Wall over there. The village of Wall. Um, Sir Hadrian's Wall path doesn't actually go through. I thought it did. Um, so we're just going to cross this road. As you can see, there's the sign there. This follows Hadrian's Wall Path. So that's what we'll do. And just down this bank is a place called Chalafad. So, hold on, as you can see, it's spitting on again. It's still warm though. Uh, not that bad, I need to put me waterproofs on yet. I'm quite happy about that because it is very warm. If I put them on, I'll be very hot. So, I'll just give me the other turn at the minute. If it wasn't raining, I'd probably take it off and put it on the t-shirt. 
form out. So, yeah, as I say, path is very well signposted and well cut. I'm very impressed. And uh, we'll head down to Tollerford, we'll go across the bridge over the River Tyne. And uh, get some more video when we get there. Right, we're just on the road here. There's the bridge over the time where Tullerford's just behind that. And here's Brunton Turret. It's just in the field there. Up by the wall. I do apologise though because no dogs are allowed in. So we won't be going up there today. So, yeah, we'll continue on to Tullerford. Over the bridge, over the time, and then we we'll swing a left and follow the road back towards Chester's. Right, we're just coming to Chollerford now. As you can see, that was a picture of the original bridge where it crossed the river with the wall attached. And then we've got the, the new road bridge, which is just here, look. So we're right on the, the right side of the path, the right side of the road. There's the, the hotel there, look. We've got a swimming pool and jacuzzi, I'm there to believe. There's the River Tyne. There's the weir. Going down. The river's going out to sea. Beautiful part of the river though, wouldn't it, for a boat maybe? A bit of boating in there. So we're just going to go down the roundabout. And take a left. Follow the road along to Chester's Roman Fort. And then start heading back up onto the, on the hills and fells, I think. Right, we're just continuing the road on. He has a uh, Chester's Roman Fort. We're not going in there today. Um, you know, it's about what doing the wall today. Not so much about visiting the forts along the wall. Um, but yeah. So there you go, call out the left and the castle to the right. And then we'll just continue along this rain road. And the North side of the road, there's a little path look. And then we'll just continue along here. Get the miles in. Let's continue along the wall. How was that for a stud farm, eh? What a lovely grand building. You must have some uh, good horses. That's the building they live in. I don't know if it still is a stud farm, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. I think it's called Walwick Hall. Oh, there you go, look, there's a horse sculpture in there. Come on, you, this way. So I think we're. Start back in the fields again shortly and we'll come across a bit of a bit of the wall again. It's not far up here I don't think. But that's cottage, yeah. That's the cottage where the butler used to live, I would think. <laughs> As the name suggests. Nice, nice little view there. As we're heading up this hill. Up the little village of Walwick. Oh, lovely. Oh, that's got the hard rear pump in. So we'll go up here and I think we'll look for a spot for lunch.
So there's where we've just come up, where them cows are in the field, just follow that path, you can just see it. And over this little stile. And some views again now. And uh, just follow this little path along the meadow. And I think we'll sort of meet up by the side of the road again. And then um, there's a bit of the wall you walk up past. Might stop there and have some lunch. And uh, so I'm getting peckish. So we're about 8.4 miles in. Uh, what else have we got to tell you? 18,325 steps and 1,800 calories. There you go, there's some information. Only a few steps that like. Hey ho, that'll get me uh, weekly count up a bit because most of the rest of the week I haven't done many. I think it's 12,000 a day you meant to do or 10,000 a day. So I'm not going to worry anyway. There we go, there's another style up on the wall there. Across that. Let's keep going. Right, black cart. I believe that's where the bit of wall is. So that's where we're going to stop and have some lunch. 8.8 miles in. So stop there, have some lunch. And then maybe get another four or five under there. It just depends. There's a temple on the wall. Or just off the wall, off this path. So I might be off and go and visit that. And uh, finish there. Let's just see what happens. You know, it's one of them walks where you can just go as far as you want, really. And then uh, I'll get picked up, and that'll be the next stretch done. Oh, I'm not afraid my lunch. Whew, hungry now. I just want to find somewhere nice to sit, so I'm thinking of sitting sitting on the wall. It's quiet enough. I've only seen one of a hiker. Oh dear. What's that last four hours? So of course it's um it's May the 16th. So is it tomorrow? I'm sure it's tomorrow when all the accommodation opens. So that'll be when probably all the bed and breakfasts and Hotels and likes have the hikers and walkers staying. So it's probably the last quiet day to day, really. Um, I'm sure when I do my next stretch, as I say, past Sycamore Gap and that, that'll be busy. And, uh, but there you go, that's the way. So I don't know if you can see. Uh, there, so we're going up there. That's a stretch of wall. So that's where we're going to sit and have our lunch, and then up the hill, and we're even going to view. It's still a bit cloudy. Yep. Right. Be back in a minute. So now we're at a place called Black Hearts, and we've got where audience so one two three four five six seven eight coups so here's a bit of the wall pause that if you want to have a read so we're starting to uh, gain a bit of ground now and we're going to go to the temple of Mid midris so there you can see though how we've Gain the elevation. Yep. Right. We'll uh, sit and have lunch, I think, once we can get rid of these fans. I'm pleased to see I've left the cows down there. Something more interesting than me now. So we're just sitting on a little bit of wall having my lunch. Mister's got his bag of food. My lovely lady has made me pack lunch, so I've got plenty. 
I've got sandwiches, egg and tomato, banana, jammy wheels, a grenade, carb kill. I've never had one of them before. Let's see what that's all about. A Diet Coke and a yogurt. We'll get this inside of us and get refueled back up for the next four miles or so. And he's going to have his dinner, aren't you? <laughs> right. I'm off to enjoy this. There's a little trick point stone. 9.8 mile in. You probably can hear the winds getting up now. And uh, there's a bit of rain on the way, I think. So, we're nearly done for the day. Just continue on. Get about 10 mile in. Uh, another 10 mile knocked off. Whew. Um. Yeah, so that's a trick point on Hadrian's Wall. Now, there is another one, which is west of Sycamore Gap. And it's, uh, I believe it's the highest point on Hadrian's Wall. So we've got that to come to yet. And then I think after that, dare I see it, it's all downhill to Barrow and Furness. Well, sort of, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, it's been a good stretch, though. Good part of the walk. A few things to see, and uh, yeah, up in the hills, up in the country, getting some fresh air, getting the muscles working, getting the calories burned. Yeah, not a bad day. And then it's uh, another 10 off now, so I think, I think I did about, was it 11 or 12 on the first stretch? And maybe 12 again, and maybe 10 a day, so 10, 12, 24, 34. So we're getting there. Um, we're not halfway yet. But, as I say, we're tripping away. I'm just enjoying it. So, yeah, we'll just do the last sort of half mile, mile. And then uh, get picked up and call it a day. Right, guys. We are now... Ten three quarter miles in. So basically it's gonna be about eleven mile when I finish. I'm just walking down towards the Roman Temple. It's car park there, so I'm gonna call it a day. Um I had a good good hike. Weather's changing. A bit of bad weather on the way now, so I'm just gonna quit while I'm ahead. Uh, have a lovely day and I'm gonna use this as a finishing point, which is a handy starting point for next time because it's car park that here. So uh thanks for watching guys. Stay safe, and until my next adventure, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.